What's up, guys? This is Mike from Examiner.com here talking to Miss Lindsay Jones at RTX 2014. So, Lindsay, how are you doing? Uh, fantastic. It's been a wonderful weekend, I'm sure. You can agree as well. I know you've been able to check out some of the sites. We hung out last night at a party. It's cool. <laughs> uh, it's been awesome. I mean, I was speaking to Barbara just a moment ago about how we've increased the, the size of guests over uh, 2,000 more now this year. I mean, yeah, last year was 10,000 and we're up to 30,000, which is insane. And knowing all these people have come specifically to see our content and things that we create, it's, it's very humbling, but mind-blowing for sure. We're trying to still take it all in, I guess. Yeah. So I know that you've been a part of a lot of panels while you've been here over this weekend. So which one would you say that you had the most fun with or that you felt most interested in? Ooh, uh, that's hard to say, too, because we make so much and we're, we're getting our hands in all sorts of different genres. And I'm involved in a lot of stuff throughout the company. But uh, honestly, any premiere or premiere we had during the panels, uh, Ruby premiered the volume two, episode one. That was well received. People loved it. Uh, same with the animated adventure panel. We just launched the, uh, or we premiered the first episode of the X-Ray and Bab animated adventure series. Yeah. So people received that very well, which is great. We were excited for that. Um, same thing with Achievement Hunter. We showed a, a video that we had made that was a silly intro that people just went crazy for. And I, I think those are the most exciting for me is seeing people's reactions to these things that we've been waiting and hoping that they would love and going, yes, they actually did like it. Awesome. So how does it feel for you to see those types of reactions from so many people? It's still crazy. I mean, uh, Ruby alone, we were speaking earlier, the cast and myself, um, last year whenever we premiered the show, we were still worried about what the reception would be. We had no idea. Rooster Teeth had never done anything anime-oriented before, so we were like, okay, you know, there might be some backlash from our fan base. It's something new that they're not used to. And the reception we had was superb. And now that we have this entire year, of an, a whole season has gone by, or volume, excuse me, uh, people know the characters, they know the background of certain things that are happening in the story, and now we get to see volume two, which is just so much bigger than we could have ever anticipated. So, uh, again, it's just insane to see the reception. It, honestly, I started crying a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's not going to be too sentimental. But, yeah, it's, it's heartwarming. <laughs> So how would you say that Volume 2 is going to differ from Volume 1? Uh, it's going to be exciting because we finally get to, like I said, we delve into more of the character development. Volume 1 is introduction of the world we're in, what kind of show this is going to be, the different characters that we're dealing with. But now that we have that, people know their characters, they have their favorites, they have the ones they don't like very much. But either way, we know who's going to be in it, but now we get a chance to actually see what's going on behind each character, who their family is, where they came from, even the different areas in the city that they're in. I know we've mentioned Vacuo several times. Um, so we have no idea what their interaction is uh, with everyone or even just as small as Beacon, the different, I mean, there's several, like, I would argue hundreds of students at Beacon and we haven't have yet to meet all of them or even all the professors. So uh, it's just gonna be exciting to, again, explore more, basically. So I talked a little bit to Barbara about this earlier. Um, would you say that you have very much control over where your character goes, any input on what goes on with the character? <laughs> we do have a little bit. Um, it's nice. Monty is very uh, welcoming in the creative process, same with Miles and Carrie. If we have a suggestion, or even especially with the line writing where I say, oh, well, would it be funny if this happened? Or I don't know if this really seems very Ruby-esque. Would it be okay if we said this instead? And they say, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Same thing on the polar opposite where I'll, I'll deliver a line and they're like, oh, well, I, I know that you're thinking of it this way from the script perspective, but let's try it like this. And it becomes completely different, but way better than we anticipated. So it, it's a bit of a collaboration, the, the whole process. But yeah, a little bit of give and take on both ends, I would say. Awesome. So switching gears a little bit, switching over to Achievement Hunter. So yeah. <laughs> lately I've been seeing that you've been getting in front of the camera a lot more. You've been getting involved, particularly you have the verses and now the Let's Plays. So what was that process like? Uh, it was. It's awesome. One, I'm so glad that I'm able to be in front of the camera and uh, do a lot of things, or I guess be a voice now. Right. Um, before, I've been editing for Achievement Hunter for about a year. Uh, and then I approached Jeff saying, listen, I, I'm interested in doing a little bit more uh, uh, on-camera personality work, I guess. I've played video games before. Obviously, I'm not at the same caliber as the rest of the guys. They've been doing it for a long time. And they have their own dynamic going. But he said, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to try and see where that goes. And he said, I, it feels like I fit the humor. And that's one thing that I like a lot is how natural it feels. And, and we, we get along really well. It, it feels almost like... I don't want to say family because people don't get along in families, but it feels like a, an SNL cast, I guess. We know exactly what person is going to be laying down what kind of jokes or what the feel is going to be for, this, for the, the scene we've set, I guess. So it's, it's been fantastic how easy the transition's been, but also very exciting to see what's going to come up next, too. Totally. So I actually had, had a chance to talk to Jeff earlier, and one of the things that he said that he enjoyed about having you on the team was that he likes having that couple dynamic, you know, two people that <laughs> really know each other very well playing 
video games with each other. So how has that been kind of, right? How has that been kind of forming your own identities that are together but also separate between yourself and Michael? Uh, it's interesting because we do our best to try and keep it separate as well. I mean, we respect each other's work. One, we never want to be a token thing of like they're the couple who's doing this. And right. for some people, that's their thing, but that's just not what we're interested in. Um, and honestly, again, going back to the, the fluidity and how easy it's been to transition, me coming in and as a voice or as another player in Let's Plays has been pretty easy because Michael and I consider each other friends first before, you know, before romantic relationship or, you know, husband and wife now. So it's it's not very hard. Uh, it's interesting when fans approach us and say, oh, we love you guys and how it's so awesome for your marriage. Awesome when you uh, told Michael, like, to go fuck off or something like that. I'm like, oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, like, it's, it's very different, but yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And then going back a little bit to what you said, you said you approached Jeff to get in on those Let's Plays. Why did you feel as though that was something that you wanted to do? Uh, well, I approached him originally to join Achievement Hunter to begin with. I was in live action, and I was actually one of the producers of the podcast, as well as editing. Uh, I love that area of work. There was nothing bad about it, but I, honestly, I was watching Achievement Hunter, and I said, this is really fun. And I used to do a lot of improvisational comedy, and I thought, okay, well, I can get into that as well. Again, I love video games. I'm a huge nerd. So I said, <clears throat> do you have an opening possibly for anyone who can help out? I also do editing and film work, anything you need. I had no anticipation or didn't even think that I could possibly be a personality and he said yeah absolutely we'd love to have you come in work on some stuff and so I edited for Achievement Hunter for about a year and then after that yeah slowly but surely I, I talked to Jeff and I said hey would it be cool if I jumped in on this video or would it be okay if I, I made this what do you think like friend or men don't dance was just something that I put together uh, at my desk and I said look this is a silly idea but do you want to do it and he said sure why don't you do commentary with Gavin and Michael and then you know now we have friend or men don't dance yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah so Along with that, what would you say uh, was really, how do I put this, would you say that you kind of feel like a role model for some of the women that are out there, particularly those that are getting into gaming? Uh, people send me messages like that too. It's still weird. I'm, I'm very honored and you know, if they see me as a role model, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm flattered because I feel like uh, there there is a little bit of a, a difference, I feel like, for men and women in the industry. Obviously, it's definitely improved a lot, it's only, especially in the time that I've been involved with uh, certain other film industries as well, and even video gaming. But um, I feel like we're reaching a level of equality, if I could say. But it's it's inspiring, and if people you know see me as a role model in being involved in Achievement Hunter, then that's fantastic. But on that same token, they've never seen me as the the woman in Achievement Hunter, or yeah. or they nor was I hired to try and fill some kind of a gender gap that was there. It was hey, Lindsay's really funny. She seems to fit in. Let's bring her in. And I just happen to be female. And I feel like honestly, that's what we should strive for. Is you know what are your assets? Let's not focus on physical attributes here. Mm -hmm. And that's also what I really appreciate about Achievement Hunter is they don't do that. So um, it's yeah, it's very inspiring, and I love receiving messages like that. And I hope that I hope people are inspired to also try and be an achievement hunter as well. All the women out there, and same with Rooster Teeth. I make a lot of posts, kind of highlighting how many women are involved with Rooster Teeth, and we're we're almost at forty percent women, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Started as a boys' club, now kind of evening out a little bit Absolutely. more. That's yeah. awesome. So, final two questions. Sure. So, first off. What would you say is one of the weirdest moments that you've ever had at either Achievement Hunter or Rooster Teeth? Ooh, that's hard. Every single day is a weird day. You go in, you have no idea what you're going to expect. Someone right. could be in costumes, someone's running around naked, or like, you know, people are slapping each other. Who knows? <laughs> Gavin's spilling something and Michael's yelling at him. Um, I, oh, man, Jeff farts a lot on stuff, usually on Gavin's cups. That's okay. pretty interesting. I've been there to firsthand witness Jeff farting on a cup, and then he'll leave the room. Gavin comes back in with no idea, and then he'll take a swig of it and go, well, that doesn't smell right. And I'm like, oh, God, gross. Yeah. So that's probably some of the funnier moments is just watching the interaction of the guys just being themselves and, you know, yeah. me getting to interact with them, too, because we're just friends hanging out. Yeah, that's, that's probably great. the best part. Weirdest thing that I've had to work with? Uh, <clears throat> it's always interesting when you pick up other projects, and I try my best, too, to open myself up to other areas in the company. Um, so whenever there's an area that needs to be filled or some work that needs to be done, I'm not above going, hey, I have time. I'd like to try and do it. So I feel like, not necessarily weird in a bad way, but weird and I'm not comfortable yet, but I'll get there, is bringing myself into new projects and kind of getting a feel for the workflow there. And I'm like, oh, this is this is new to me, like specifically with the X-Ray and Bev. I didn't have any part with RTAA aside from uh, taking clips of the podcast and Jordan animating me, but now I'm writing with him and I'm working with this other collaboration, their collaborative team where we have a producer, an executive producer, people who are drawing concept art for it, and I've taken on a completely different role. So that's, it's weird, but exciting to do. 
That's awesome. And then final question, what was a moment or even a collection of moments that you've had at Rooster Teeth or Achievement Hunter where you just knew that that's where you belong? Uh, again, I, I still feel like probably, not going to lie, Frenderman Don't Dance, the first, uh, was one of the first commentaries that I did, but just how, how fluid it was and how it felt very much we were all at ease and it didn't seem like... I mean, there's always some trepidation whenever you get in front of a camera or on a microphone and you don't want to you don't want to say something stupid you don't want to look like an idiot and especially with achievement hunter there is a set of people who have already have this fan base this following and I'm I was the new person coming into that and I thought oh man I, I really hope that people like it and I hope that I fit in I hope that it's not I'm not the person in the cast that they're like why why is she here but everything went fluidly it was perfect and I thought okay good I feel like I belong here we're gonna be great Great. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for taking the time to of talk course. to us. Thank you so much for seeing me. Appreciate yeah. It. So, again, this has been Mike Hughes with Examiner.com here at RTX with Miss Lindsay Jones. Sorry, Mrs. Lindsay Jones. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Take care.